what I'm asked to present here is basically a project from the, what is mainly running in the US by some uh, US uh, people. I have the pictures here. It is um, Wesley uh, Ingerson and V. Subrarium. Um, he is, uh, th these two people have actually helped to foster um, um, uh, a kind of guidelines, guidelines to program operators how to ca get a more common approach on uh, product category rules. So uh, I will start with uh, two of my own slides, my own si insights, but also present where uh, what 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 is going in in the U.S. with using also partially there the slides we made together. So. One of the, this is an old slide. I've been actually using that a lot of times in PCR communities because it is a bit showing the mess where we're in. Um, we have many program operators. I don't want to list them all. And then we have the problem that we're getting labels on a product. But before you know it, you have to increase the size of your beer can to get all the labels on. And there's one way to confuse the general audience. Do it like that. And this will really become a bit of a mess. Um, what is new is also new kids on the block, uh, industry associations, which actually I think became a bit impatient. If the governments and the national uh, uh, program operators can't solve this, we are getting more and more industry-led coalitions. So it even maybe further confuses or it maybe saves the landscape because then industry takes responsibilities to sort this out because they gave up the hope that national and, um, and, and in, uh, smaller institutions can solve this. Anyway, for the time being, it will not work. It will not be credible. And hopefully, the path can be the new kit on the block, which creates a kind of critical mass to change that. But still, you have the issues. How do you get the, people, the organization outside the EU on board? Now, I, I realize also, uh, Michaela said, there are some changes now. There's been, um, uh, uh, it, it is a more international co collaboration starts because everybody starts to see that we will not go on a right, on a course to success if we don't collaborate much better. This idea of collaboration was actually also uh, in a project with Rasmus and I tried to lead uh, on a PCR roundtable. We started in the third PCF uh, a world summit, it was still called PCF, and the idea was to align it. And we had actually a very nice process ongoing with almost all the most relevant program operators around the table. We had webinars, but there we more or less realized this is not going to work. We liked each other, we like to talk and exchange information, but nobody said, yes, I'm going to change something. They all said, well, but they kept explaining how well they were doing things. And um, at some countries they even said you should not even talk about the word harmonization because there are, we have good reasons not to harmonize. And actually I started to understand why this is. Because if you want to have a stakeholder engagement process in Asia and you have all your documentation in English, you have a problem. Even in Europe you have the requirement to be able to communicate in different languages. If you want to work with your local SMEs, in Latin America, and again, you, you have to be on board on an international-led uh, process, it is not easy. So there are actually reasons not to harmonize. But if you don't harmonize, you will not get success. So there's a big, both sides are true uh, problem. So Rasmus and I decided to more or less freeze this for the time being, but something else then happened in the US where we had this uh, group of um, uh, com uh, people coming together try to at least make a guideline, a document which could help us to collaborate. And also uh, Michaela has been communicating a lot with them. And also these uh, company-led uh, uh, works are doing that. So they uh, analyzed also the problem in this way. It is inconsistent and this can th really threaten the legacy the legitimacy of LCA-based product claims. So what we, um, of course, this is the same list of standards they had on their, um, uh, on their radar. And actually there are more, but these are the most important that they looked at. And then they said, um, oh yeah, and, and, and before that, it was indeed this PCR roundtable that inspired it. 
It was also uh, at the, in the American, the uh, AL, ACLCA uh, had a study on PCR duplicity and there were uh, some alignment sessions at the uh, life cycle, the 11th uh, LCA conference in the, in the US. And then the ACLCA PCR committee started off this uh, initiative. It's an independent of, uh, uh, effort, it's just kind of an open source um, um, uh, activity. It's multi-stakeholders, uh, anyone can contribute, which also is a bit of a, um, it, it's not steered top down. And um, it has no financial re uh, support, except that uh, V uh, was in our, uh, is, is on our, uh, He's, he's an employee of Prey North America, so he used some of his time for this. So um, the participants are listed here. Um, you see many US standards organizations. This is typically for the US. In the US, there are about seven program operators, all on a commercial basis. So that's very different from what's happening in most other regions, where it is national-based initiatives. Um, and these are the two people who then um, developed that. And uh, maybe I forgot to say, I'm also from Prey uh, Consultants uh, and Prey North America office has been uh, helping this. But uh, Wes uh, Ingerson from US EPA has been very active in this. And there's been, of course, a steering committee. Maybe you can recognize the name of uh, Michele somewhere over here. Uh, he's also been uh, contributing to this uh, process and some others, but you see many American organizations, so it is a heavily, it's rather biased to the American um, area. It's not owned by anyone. Um, it will be public domain. There's a website where this all is. I'll try to go quickly through here. So the idea is to uh, create an alignment document, a guideline, how to align, um, and bring um, uh, even a template, a structure, and to try to also be check whether you are in line with the LCA rules. They have also coined the idea of flexible PCRs, which is in one way tricky, but the other way maybe useful, that you have um, at least one core way of doing this, but then you can have different ways of communicating and adapting it to geographic variability. So you have a core concept of the PCR, but you can still make different tastes, different versions of it, while still being consistent as much as possible. Uh, that has to still to be tested, but um, that's what it does. Um, so the, um, yeah, I can skip this for time. So this is an example for the uh, application uh, of the guidance. Um, so there is an idea from the standards you get PCR guidance, this is doc this document, and then the idea was to have a, a standard overall PCR where you can make an EPD according to the EPD, according to the PATH, according to uh, carbon footprint. That is a bit the concept they're working on. Again, that's not really tested at the moment, but it's, I think, a nice way of, of getting people on board, trying to, um, to start to uh, uh, develop alignment. So it is intended to uh, supplement, to provide operational guidance. A lot of the text is on, uh, on how to organize this thing um, and to uh, uh, yeah, so provide instructions and recommendations. It is not a standard on its own. It is, um, uh, so it, it is just to add on to that what's already there. Um, the, uh, so it, it, it can be used for, uh, for the standard developers uh, as they see it fit. Um, I don't think I should add much in this audience. This is uh, where they are on the timeline. Um, they have started in December. They have had a public consultation that is now closed. So they are now uh, using all the comments. They got a, a lot of comments and now they are working hard to get the release out of this document. Uh, so hopefully that will start to inspire um, other organizations. Um, these are the documents which are uh, presented and there is then um, 
this is the structure of the document, so it has an element of uh, uh, preparation, how you make the, the organize the PCR development, how you what elements you should have to do, also the PCR review described, how you could publish it, uh, the recommended best practices and the use of it. So it is really trying to be quite comprehensive and it is not that far from, for instance, what is circulating in the Sustainable Upper Health Coalition PCR, which has also gone on the review, and it's actually not too far from what the, the basic elements are quite uh, com uh, compl compatible with what is in the PATH guidance. So it is a way of spreading this com uh, consensus. So these are the addresses. There is a PCR guidance website I would like to highlight, and there is a PCR guidance uh, email if you're interested. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mark.